Welcome back to Full Circle Florida. She ran for governor and now she's leading the Florida Democratic Party. Nikki Freed has never been afraid of a fight and now she has one. My conversation on how she plans to fix a party that is now nearly irrelevant in a Republican dominated state. Where did the Florida Democratic Party go wrong in recent years and what is your plan to make the party relevant in this state again? You know, what really has happened to the last, I want to say even 20, 30 years, is the Democratic Party has every single election cycle looked at that election cycle and tried to put blame on, you know, whether a candidate left money behind or was there not the right matchup or whatever that was wrong with that situation. Instead of doing the hard internal look at looking at how do we make sure that we're expanding our base, that we're going to our communities year round, that we're working on voter registration, that we're having a message that is transcending partisan politics, going to that the issues are actually impacting the people every single day in our state. And, and November was kind of the, the accumulation of, of all of the problems the Democratic Party has had um, over the course of, of decades. And unfortunately, as, as people kept saying, we hit the iceberg. And, and so now we have to take a hard look at the internal structure of the party, how we're communicating internally, externally, how we're dealing with issues that are coming arise in our state, how are we the problem solvers, and making sure that we're regaining the trust of the people of our state, that the Democratic Democratic Party continues to show up and will continue to be the defenders for everyday working Floridians to make sure that the cost of living here is still giving people that American dream, that, that hope of opportunity, making sure that people are safe in, in their classrooms, our kids are safe, uh, and making sure that we've got truly an environment that everybody's got an opportunity for success. What is the right balance between cultural issues and so-called kitchen table topics like inflation, home insurance, education quality, it seems so much energy right now is on the culture divide and not enough on the actual real issues that everyday people come home to. How much of your strategy is on that versus the latest culture flare up? You know, it is really truly unfortunate that the Republican Party, the, the party that used to be about less government, less government oversight, less government intrusion, less taxes, less spending, that this small government mentality from the Republican Party is completely blown up. They have done everything in their in their power the last five years under Governor DeSantis to go into people's bedrooms, go into the classrooms, go into the everyday lives of Floridians. And they and people in our state are so tired uh, of this rhetoric, uh, of this angry fear mongling that's, that's coming from the radicalization of the Republican Party. And Democrats are going to continue standing up for the kitchen table conversations, making sure that we're making our state more affordable, looking at property insurance. I just had a press conference earlier this morning talking about farmers now leaving our state, the property insurance crisis that has come under Republican rule for the last few decades, and especially the last five years, talking about access to the ballot box, access to a public education, making sure <clears throat> that we're providing a safe environment for our kids to go to school and for our families to grow up here in our state. And so we know that the culture wars are created by the Republican Party. Democrats are going to continue standing up for freedom, for liberty, for economic opportunities, and to make sure that Florida continues to be, which it is not, uh, affordable for everybody to live well, here. Well, and on that, we've been reporting several months about the growing insurance crisis in Florida. This week, we got word that we are farmers now pulling out of the state. There are several more companies that appear to be on the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, what is your read on how big of a problem this could be for the everyday Floridian? This is catastrophic. Uh, this is catastrophic for our state. Um, you know, knowing that we we are threatened every single year by hurricanes. We every single year we keep having Cat Five hurricanes. You know, somebody who grew up here in, in Miami Dade County, I lived through Hurricane Andrew, where we all thought that was going to be a once in a lifetime storm. And unfortunately, we keep having Cat Fives, whether it's Hurricane Michael, Hurricane Ian, that continues to threaten our coastal communities and, and everything in between. And the fact of the matter is that we've got 1.3, almost 1.4 million citizens insurance policies, which is supposed to be the insurer of last resort, not having access to a affordable property insurance is going to cripple our homeowners marketplace. Not only can people who live here can't afford their property insurance. You know, always take this example, my, my seven and personal, my, my 72 year old mother 
She lives in Palm Beach County, west part of the town, not in any flood zones. And her insurance carrier dropped her this past year because she refused to participate in fraud and get a new and get a new roof on her home. And so they've been she's been dropped and now has to go to Citizens, which has doubled her premiums. She's on a fixed income. And this story, while personal to me and my family, is the stories that I'm hearing all over the state from every single family in our state. Every family in our state is dealing with a property insurance catastrophe and it's only going to get worse and god forbid that we get hit by one two three hurricanes in a season um i, I don't know where our state's going to go well, and i don't know how people are going to be able to afford to should, get, rebuild should the legislature be calling another special session and doing something it just seems like everyone's sitting back and watching this happen uh what can be done on the legislative side at this point or i know that the uh reform that they put in place, it's going to take another 18 months. I don't know if the everyday Floridian has that time if they're getting dropped. Okay, let, let me also make a very big clear distinction. The Republicans have had two special sec sessions. That is on our dime. They can't deal with it during regular session. They've had to call two special sessions. And this isn't like this just happened overnight. We have been having these issues for decades and more so being been calling out for the last four years that you're seeing a lot of our homeowners here in our state seeing in property insurance premiums increasing 40, 50, some places even 60%. And what the Republicans have done is said, wait a second, wait 18 months, wait two years to see your premiums start to decrease. I can guarantee you that there is no world in which your property insurance carriers are ever going to reduce the premiums. Even if they're starting to see an overhead decrease and start seeing savings on the business side, there is no requirement for them actually to trickle down those savings to the consumer. So this has been a flat out lie that the Republicans have been spewing to Floridians across our state for the last couple of years. What would you do as so a couple? So a couple of things. First and foremost is things that I've already been presenting, um, as well as the Democrats in the legislative session, and that's going after the reinsurance market. Because what's happened is, is very complex, is that when an insurance, a domestic insurance carrier here has to also provide what's called reinsurance. So that's insurance for the insurance carrier. And most of reinsurance is bought on an international marketplace, which are seeing not internationally skyrocketing on premiums, which means that the homeowners have to pay for the higher premiums that go down to the to the actual policyholders. We have here in the state of Florida a catastrophic fund, which is our domestic reinsurance market that every single domestic carrier has to buy into. We've got almost a $3 billion, give or take, um, surplus in our CAT fund. What should have been done is allow our domestic carriers to actually buy into our domestic reinsurance marketplace at a significantly reduced cost and reduce the amount of money that's needed in the CAT fund. That way, that reduces their costs and reduces the amount of overhead needed for their policyholders to cover their costs. That is just one example. Every single session, Democrats have proposed solution after solution after amendment after amendment. And unfortunately, Republican Party has refused to hear any of the of the bills, refused to hear any of the amendments. And so here we are. And until which time that we have a comprehensive plan that you're bringing all parties together we are not going to see a reduction in, in premiums, and you're going to continue to seeing insurance carriers leaving our state. Yeah, well, hurricanes are definitely not political, and uh, no one is immune from the disaster right. they leave in their wake. Nikki Freed, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Full Circle Florida continues after this.